finding the voices. Talk show by Monica Ingram. I'm a huge fan of finding the voices. You're doing a great job. Manipur. Manipur, we have a lot of good positive uh, voices and you know, make those voices more visible. We wanted our voice to reach in all the corners of the world. Finding the Interesting voices. people. In finding the finding voices on people the from our own place. Share positive stories and inspiring stories and bring out the good stories of Manipur. Finding the voices. With the birth of the movement of Human Rights Commission in Manipur, which you have started, you started your journalism work. Yeah. Okay. Then. Journalism, I said, I tell my people that, listen, I learned economics in the Israeli School of Economics, mm. but journalism, I learned it on the streets of Calcutta. Okay. <laughs> because after I left teaching in 82, I went all around the state of Sikkim. Okay. okay. I've been visiting that state since 1971. That was long before it was merged. But then again, I, 83, before the tourist invasion of Sikkim took place, I went all around and uh, I was in a place called Lachen on the China border. Mm -hmm. you, even normal Sikkimese staying in Gangtok required a special permit to be issued by the Deputy Commissioner of the district mm. to, go to, to, to go that because that's a reserve area of the Lepcha community. Okay. So, so they, it's kind of a reserve. Mm. As in America, you call it an Indian reservation, mm -hmm. right? I can mm -hmm. say. So you, it's just, it's not, so maybe your Indian reservation in America is bigger than mm. half the state of Sikkim, but mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it was there. And then, uh, an IB man was, Indian Bureau, Intelligence Bureau man was following me, you see. Okay. Yeah. And he, uh, he wanted to know what a Manipuri chap was doing on the Indo China border. Mm. And that's when I told him, listen, I've always wanted to go to Switzerland, mm -hmm. but never had the money. Mm. So I've come <laughs> here because it's equally beautiful <laughs> 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 and more pure mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and more environmentally uh, pure, mm -hmm. uh, friendly, you know, mm -hmm. because, uh, because there's no pollution there mm -hmm. and there's no vehicle to take with you. You have to walk. Walk you and have track. To walk, okay. You have to track. Okay. Later on, I realized I got to know that the Indian Army had moved up a squadron of its tanks there at that village called Lachen, okay. where I had tracked. Mm -hmm. The roads had improved, so they had moved tanks mm -hmm. to meet any Chinese aggression kind of threat. Okay. Uh, but that wasn't. Then I went to Sikkim, Gangtok. Then I began to realize that when India took over or in where India merged Sikkim into its union in 1975, it did not implement the Excise Act, the Central Excise Act into the state of Sikkim. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they just forgot about it. Okay. Or perhaps they thought it was an excise holiday, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then, that was a time when the Indian cigarette industry... Oh, it started blooming. Suddenly realized that okay. if you roll your cigarettes in Sikkim, mm -hmm. then you avoid or your the Central Excise Tax mm -hmm. is exempted. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's when the uh, when Sikkim became a Shangri-La for this tobacco to barons of any tobacco barons. They were rolling cigarettes elsewhere in the country, bringing them to these sheds in Sikkim, mm. and again taking it out, saying that these were rolling Sikkim. Okay. And mind you, you know, for a cigarette that costs uh, one rupee, okay, mm. let's say a stick of cigarette costs one rupee. Mm -hmm. 60 paisa mm -hmm. is accounted by the central excise tax. I see. So kay? that much is like not paid not because paid of okay. that. And then, 
order. Then the rolling charge actually comes with the actual cost price of a cigarette costing one rupee is just about ten paisa. Hmm. But because of all the tax and everything. All the tax. So then comes one. Suddenly the government of India realized that they and their loss had lost about 300 crores in mm -hmm. 1983, okay, mm -hmm. which is big money. Mm -hmm. And Sikkim was, it became a booming state, you see. Mm -hmm. Real estate prices doubled, quadrupled. Mm -hmm. And I still remember one chap had 47 crores in his bank account in white money. Mm -hmm. okay. So I did my first story on Sikkim oh. called The Lost Sangrila. I see. For which I was paid for. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then I went and had a friend of mine called uh, Paranjoy Bhuhatha Gurta, who is now the editor of the very, very prestigious academic journal called Economic and Political Weekly of India, mm -hmm. published from Bombay. Mm -hmm. And he was then working with this telegraph group and I went and I can edited my story with him. Mm -hmm. I was very new, I didn't know what to put, mm -hmm. where to put. So he kind of uh, compressed my story mm -hmm. and, he, and he, he kind of taught me the lines you know mm -hmm. this is where you emphasize this is where mm -hmm. you put a stop you know that kind of thing okay then I went and submitted my story there okay and then my first story was published it was called Sikkim the lost Shangri-La mm. <laughs> okay so that was the first <laughs> that was the first story story that, and yeah. the beginning of yeah. your yeah. journalism okay, work. Yeah. okay then I went to Delhi and then the second story that I did was uh, for the week magazine, which is pub published from South India. Mm -hmm. So I went and sat there and I sat on a typewriter and I kind of tuck, 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 And it was entitled New Wave of Insurgency in Manipur. Okay. Okay. And that was the second article for which I was paid for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then from there, I ventured out to Kashmir, in Jain, Jammu and Kashmir. And mm. my brother who was in the Indian Army was serving as the ADC or the ID camp to the uh, governor of Jammu and Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Stayed in uh, the Raj Bhavan in Srinagar. Then I went to Leh. Mm. All beautiful places you are getting to go. I, mean, I went to Leh, but it was long before the tourists came. Yeah. Okay. Now Leh is like... Uh, more touristic. More touristic and you know, the people are not as... And then uh, also I went and stayed in a village in Sopor district in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. There was a person from JNU, uh, who from that village who had studied in JNU. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading their minds, their looks, you see. Then I came back and I told my brother and his army colleague, and I said, boss, it's, it is coming here. So what is coming here? He said, insurgency is coming here in Kashmir. Mm. He said, I can read. Because I have said insurgency in Manipur in 79, 80. Mm. So in 83, I can see these symptoms cropping up, creeping up. Okay. Then I saw in Jammu and Kashmir, Sopor uh, village, uh, district, mm -hmm. in 1983. I came mm -hmm. and told. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of army chaps were also there. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't understand what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. What is this chap talking about? That I said, all right, boss. Mm -hmm. Now, Kashmir is in the news not because of its touristic uh, values, right. but because of insurgency and militancy mm -hmm. and terrorism or counter-terrorism, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's something which I knew earlier. And then I came back to Imphal in September, October 83. And then I joined the... Uh, there was an English weekly called Resistance, mm -hmm. published by a group, then group called the Pan Manipuri Youth League. Okay. okay. And uh, I joined as his chief reporter, come assistant editor, come chief hawker maybe. Okay. <laughs> and I used, to, I used to type out the stories, help the, it was called a letter press, you know. Mm -hmm. Now you have all that you do. Now you have to do is type out mm. on the screen. That time you have to make it, make the words, you and make block the words, it and block it, make it in the blocks, mm. and then print it, then mm. then edit it, mm. sub it, <laughs> proofread it, <Okay. laughs> mm. and then then we used to come out every Tuesday, uh, every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Now what the government used to do was they would cut the power supply off by <laughs> by with by. Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, by Wednesday, the power used to go off, you see. Okay. 
so that the issue could not come out the next day. Okay, and but this was a weekly issue. It was a weekly issue. Okay. But, but then you have a date for publication. No? Ah, even then you found it challenging with it infrastructure. It was very challenging. And then we had, you know, what was called, it was called a cylindrical machine, printing machine, you see. Hmm. Where the news uh, mm, print is fed uh, like this and the cylinder rolls over it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Print on print the paper. Print. Yeah. Then what, how used to be this system was? There is an ancient printing machine called the treadle machine, mm -hmm. where you don't require electricity. Okay. You move with your <laughs> leg, <laughs> oh. and it goes like this, so like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, this is this technology must be at least two, must at least be two hundred years old. Okay. Because the but first, it, it worked very fine in a. It place worked very like fine in a place like Manipur. Like Manipur. Boss, you can't. You may, you may be able to cut the power supply to my hmm. Uh, hmm. printing shop, but then there is no way you can stop the papers from being coming out. Well, well, it was difficult to mm -hmm. press, keep pressing for about 5,000 copies, you know, right. but, but you have it's to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was manually, it was, you know, you operated with your foot, you see. Um. You kept on pressing, <laughs> pressing, and then there's a big, uh, 5, wheel, times. Uh, big wheel that moves around, and then, uh, then, then, then the letter face, and then the plate would mm. come like this, and okay. then, and then you also still have to remove the paper <laughs> manually. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, one thack. But how then is the ink then? then? Is it carbon then paper? Then it is, it is it carbon ink. Carbon you have to have to right? for, for some time it's very dry. Okay. Then you have to remove the carbon paper. No, 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 it's not carbon, it's like uh, ink. Oh, it's ink. In okay, okay, okay. It's, it's print ink. Okay. And but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, it was a good, good way to kind of uh, do uh, things. And Okay, so um, just to get the flow um, of you know of your career, yeah. you were teaching. Mm -hmm. Then you decided that you will come back to Manipur mm -hmm. and do journalism. Mm -hmm. No, so I wasn't decided. This is journalism oh. by was by default because I I had to do something. <laughs> so that was like because of the Human Rights Commission. Like no, that no, was no, 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 the the no, 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 not the commission. The commission came into being in 1998. Mm -hmm. uh, the movement started. You know, there's a difference between the movement and the commission. Mm -hmm. The commission is an appellate authority of violation of human rights. Okay. Where the people involved in the movement would come and appeal to. Okay. Or petition for. You see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is the uh, difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the movement. Uh, the commission is. Uh, Quasi judicial yeah, it's body. The body who comes and then verify and see what is happening. And, and gives recommendations mm -hmm. for punishment or fine people or mm. fine police persons. And okay. Uh, it's a statutory body mm -hmm. enacted under an act of the Indian Parliament mm -hmm. uh, in 1993. Mm -hmm. It was called Protection of Human Rights Act. Mm -hmm. So, government of India now can say to the rest of the world, listen. Human rights is a law in India. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we not only believe in human rights, we actually protect it through law. Mm. Because we have an act mm -hmm. called Protection of Human Rights Act. Mm. Okay, and the deficiency of the acts are there, but, but, there, is but, the but, law. There, but there is a law mm -hmm. and there is a commission. Mm -hmm. And the members are given the status of a judge of a high court mm -hmm. and the rank of a cabinet minister in the Mm -hmm. State cabinet. Mm -hmm. So you know, the, the trappings are there. Mm. Means what I was trying to get in is because of your work in the human rights movement and mm. your involvement with the social aspect of Manipur. Mm -hmm. Is that the main reason why you moved into journalism? Because that's a voice which can bring See, it out why to the public. I, even as I was moving into journalism. I was moving into this uh, social entrepreneurial mm. scenario. Mm -hmm. and <coughs> I was with the Manipur Mountaineering and Trekking Association. Mm -hmm. I took part in a long trek mm. of with, with about 100 boys and girls. Okay. We lived off the land, stayed in villages. Mm -hmm. It was about 10 days long trek. Mm -hmm. we, from Imphal, we reached the Burmese border came back, climb a peak, came back. Mm. But that's when I realized that the future of the Manip state of Manipur, if it has to be shaped by the f youth of today, mm. then these youths must be formed 
must be tampered okay mm-hmm. they must be tampered you know because iron you can bend it mm. but once you tamper it into steel you can't bend it mm. so that's how i thought of how to tamper the manipuri youths into mm. who are who are strong like iron but could still be bent mm. to be made into steel so they can be bent okay. monika the finding the voices finding the voices finding the voices I could see my father. <coughs> who came to me in my headmaster because he was unable to pay the fee. I'm sorry. No more I can't go on. Bodhi bida. Because we need such story for people to have faith in the government and the system that yes it's working. And Let's like bring peace in our home state people Manipur. We have got uh, the job without bribery. Mm-hmm. They'll do justice to their job and they will help raise the standard of Manipur. हिमालय first trip yeah no mm. because, because then what the himalayan mountaineering institute was doling out to the mm-hmm. youth of the country for about 1000 rupees for 21 days we are doling it out for 100 rupees a month mm-hmm. uh, for 21 days mhm because the rest with crowns because we have our target was the children of the low middle class and the rural areas you see mm-hmm. because that's where the bulk of the youth lies mm-hmm. okay and uh, i used to drive in four attributes okay into each of these youth mm-hmm. one is called endurance 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 courage courage fraternity fraternity and excellence and excellence i used to call them the four pillars mm. okay once these four pillars are instilled into a youth mm. and they are, and you build a house over it this house can withstand any storm in life you mm-hmm. see so that's a kind of a thought process that was going on in my mind mm-hmm. and that I was able to do that okay. in ground on ground reality mm-hmm. that's how in 1988 the ashoka fellowship the ashoka fellow came yeah ashoka fellowship mm-hmm. came okay okay and the uh, i have many other very more famous ashoka fellows one is arvind kejriwal prime minister of delhi mm-hmm. he was made an ashoka fellow in 2004 mm-hmm. for his work on right to information Mm. He was looked also looked upon as a social transformer, I say, mm-hmm. a change maker, a spark plug, plug of change. Mm-hmm. Then the second more famous, uh, second non-political person is Gobind Sitarathi, the Indian who, who with Malala was awarded the Nobel Peace mm-hmm. Prize mm-hmm. about two years back. Mm-hmm. He was elected in 2006. Mm. I was elected in two th- 1988. Yes. So I'm quite senior in that line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it's amazing. And so all your work for the social entrepreneurship is related to the mountaineering uh, events. And, yeah, it, it, and it, it, you know, mingling with the youth and mingling with the youth, living with them, mm-hmm. driving them. also as a mountaineering group aiming for mount everest right which we were able to do 3 years back mm-hmm. okay we put up three of our boys and girls there mm-hmm. but 
Oh, it was a northeastern uh, kind of uh, expedition. So we all together we put about nine people from the northeastern region on mm -hmm. Mount to our Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. That's so good. So and that's right. that, that, so that's why the final thing came in. Mm -hmm. okay. And a lot of activities I'm seeing like mm -hmm. as part of mm -hmm. the mountaineering yeah. uh, okay. association. So and then as of then I, I have a hardcore journalist friend from mm -hmm. Delhi who came and stayed with me. So this is friend. I don't know, but you seem to treat journalism as a hobby, <laughs> not <laughs> as a profession. Okay, because <laughs> you were doing like other things yeah, and yeah. then journalism. Yeah. And you know, I I have. Uh, this finger is short. It got, it got chopped. Okay. Oh. Okay. So they yeah, say Yamim Lava has nine and a half fingers mm. in eleven pies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say you have ten fingers in yeah. eleven pies, no? Eleven pies. You say it has nine and a half, 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 half fingers in eleven, 11 pies. You say. Oh. So uh, that's what uh, happened, and uh, I was kind of. Uh, he said, listen, uh, journalism keeps happening. Mm. <laughs> it will keep happening. Mm. Something or other will happen. If there is no ambush today, tomorrow there will be a bomb blast. Mm. If there is no bomb blast tomor today, tomorrow, then the day after tomorrow, there will be a curfew or a hartal or a general strike or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I still remember reporting one day, one event when the local elected, uh, let's, I don't know what you call members of the Senate or the member of the Manipur mm -hmm. Legislative Assembly, mm -hmm. they, with pistols in hand, they went out to kill the speaker. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the speaker was in hiding. Okay. And the chief minister told the police not to intervene. Oh, okay. Let the MLA's let us team out because, you know, the speaker and the government were of different parties. Okay. So, I said, listen, boss. Where in India can you get an MLA to take out a pistol and fire at a speaker mm. or at least threaten him with a gun? Mm -hmm. and Even if you play, pay, play a million dollars, th do you think a legislator in Bombay or in Delhi or Calcutta or mm -hmm. Madras or Bombay will do it? said, no. Mm. But here they are doing it free for me. Mm. <laughs> okay. So this is kind of... Uh, the background and the scenery very different from very the rest of India. Yeah, rest of India. So I said, that, don't worry, it will keep happening and I'll be around. Mm. <laughs> then I used to call myself the halfway house of in mainstream or Indian and international journalists mm. coming to Manipur. Mm -hmm. The first person who comes to me, I'll ask him, what are you after? AIDS? <laughs> Insurgency? Mm. Or drugs? <laughs> It's all is here. Just tell me what you want. Mm. Give me a day's time, I'll put you in touch with the right people. Mm. So that, that, that those things I could manage mm. to do that. And, uh, then, over time, journalism became a passion with me. Mm -hmm. And I was like a man possessed. Mm. Monica, would you believe me? But for 10 years, mm -hmm. I wrote a thousand words every day. Oh, every day. Yeah. Practical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thousand words every day. Mm -hmm. And I used to send it through telegraph. It was, it was those days you used to send it through telegram, you see, as mm. a telegraph. Okay. As a telegraphic message. Okay. And then after you type it, you count the number of words 50, yeah. 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 500. So that the man who reads it understands in how many words mm. he has to charge me for, charge mm. my company for, you see, that kind mm -hmm. of a thing used to be there, mm. right? And, uh, and then but during those time, in this 10 years of reporting, mm -hmm. um, you reported on all the conflict and social aspect. Conflict and social aspect, and you know, there was a very interesting incident actually. The underground group called the United National Liberation Front mm -hmm. had caught a Manipuri young girl mm -hmm. for taking part in pornographic films. Okay. Okay. The Manipuri women were being subjected to the pornographic industry for the first time. Okay. And since this, this group also acts sometimes as reformers. Mm -hmm or as vigilante groups, mm -hmm. had already shot three persons involved in this trade. Mm -hmm. The cameraman, the storekeeper, and mm -hmm. the financier, they were shot. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Finally, they caught hold of the actress. Okay. And she was paraded before us. Okay. And the films in which she was acting was shown. Mm -hmm. Oh, video film, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't like the manner in which some of my colleagues were asking her. You see, mm. were you sedated? Mm -hmm. Were you given drugs? She said yes. No, no, no. You look very willing in the film. You know that kind of very nasty mm -hmm. remarks with it. Mm -hmm. Then I knew the man who came to conduct the press conference. He, he had his face mask. Okay. Okay. I knew him in person. Mm -hmm. I knew what rank he held. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was the district commander of the unit of them. So I said, "Comrade Commander, mm. can I ask this girl two questions only?" Mm. He said, "Yes, please go ahead." Mm -hmm. He they used to call me Oza. Mm. Oza is teacher, no? Okay. Oza, yes, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. He, although his face was masked, I knew who he was, mm. and he knew me. Mm. Then I asked her. What is your age and in which class are you studying? These yeah. are just two questions I ask. Mm -hmm. So, sir, I'm 17 years old mm. and I'm studying in class 11. Mm. Then I threw the ball back at the district commander of the university. Mm -hmm. I said, "Commander, commander, mm. since this girl is a minor, mm. as he says, she's just 17 years old, reading in class mm. 11. Mm. Will the party, will your party or organization?" Mm. Give her a chance to reform. Mm -hmm. okay. Now that was a very tricky question, huh? Mm. But yeah. you threw the ball to them. I threw the ball to them. Mm. No, would have meant she would have been shot dead. Right. The three others have been shot. Mm. Yes, would have meant also meant that she would have been set set scot free. Mm -hmm. So this guy remains silent for about two minutes. Then says, "Sir, Oza will have to give him give her a light punishment." Mm. He says, "Please." Then they left. Okay. Then my other colleagues asked me, "What is light punishment? What is light punishment?" Mm. He said, "He's being shot in the legs." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, I didn't know <laughs> that. Yeah, light punishment. They they put pull your oh. pull your flesh under the thigh and it's shot. The okay. bones is not hurt, so it doesn't become a compound injury. Okay. It's a flesh wound. This girl was shot on both the thighs. Oh. On flesh wounds again, and okay, left. But she was survived. She survived. Now she is happily married and settled in Kachar district of Assam. Okay. But I still remember that day when I mm. asked this question. I deliberately asked. But your questions are probably more likely 90 plus percent had saved her life. Yes, most probably. Mm. If I had not asked them, I wouldn't have understood what they would have done. They, right. would, they wouldn't have mind shooting her. Right. Or crippling her. Mm. Mm, that's the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then over time, the human rights movement became a social movement in Manipur. Mm -hmm. Everybody was talking about human rights. Mm -hmm. Local youth clubs were organizing meetings on human rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it became an issue. Mm -hmm. And that's again I came into the scene again. Okay. Mm. That's where I met up with people like Babu Loitamu, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm. And uh, then, nineteen ninety-six, I went to Bangkok and was for a week with uh, the chairman of the United National Liberation Front, Sir R K Megan, Alai Sanayama, and S S Kaplang. Mm. Not many people know what this S S stands for, but I know because it stands for Sanu Sanwal Kaplang. Okay. <laughs> I asked him because mm -hmm. Sanu Sanwal Kaplang, and uh, I stayed with them for a week. Came back, published their story, mm -hmm. my interviews with them. Mm -hmm. So were you chosen? Like you were called by them? I was kind of uh, chosen by them. Chosen by them that I mm -hmm. would be given the opportunity mm -hmm. to meet them. There was the first press interview. There was they giving in the long. Career in the moment, mm. they have been exposed to the press. Okay. They were very pressure. Mm -hmm. I took pictures of them, mm -hmm. got it published. Please join me at finding the voices.